Cape Town, we had just three events left, then just two as we raced into East London. And now we're back at Kailami for the final round of the West Bank Super Series. First up is the Formula Volkswagen, as well as the Interval South African Superbikes. Super Series Final from Kailami, this time focusing on the Formula Volkswagens and the Interval National Superbikes. For all the information on the West Bank Super Series, log on to our website www.westbanksuperseries.co.za and stay in the loop. Matt and I have had a chance to drive in almost all of the categories of the West Bank Super Series. This time out, it's Volkswagen's turn. Engine Volkswagen Cup and Formula Volkswagen. Starting out with the Formula Volkswagens here at Swatkops, we're going to throw in a couple of laps and see what a layman can do in these very quick single-seaters. And they said I wouldn't fit. Whatever. I'm in. Well, kind of in. Still a couple of little adjustments that have to be made here. And those adjustments allowed me to get into the car and put in a couple of hot laps at Swatkops. Big thanks to Peter Detoy and his whole team for allowing us to come and play on this very tricky circuit. Now, in this little single-seater, Matt, I had hardly any room, dude. I can't even tell you how difficult this car was to drive when the steering wheel is on your knees. Yeah, I saw a bit of hand work there. I'm guessing that you actually had to take your hands off to make those turns happen. But great clear track for you to actually get to grips with this car, at least. Yeah, the only other two cars out there were Formula Fords, and uh, they basically only had to worry about me when I ran out of fuel on lap four. But an awesome experience. I can't even tell you, buddy. This car absolutely flies around here. Through turn four, you're almost pinned. And going through these corners, it is so good to feel the grip of the wings and slicks. Yeah, I was about to say, wings and slicks is what this is all about. Traction and just immense power in the mid part and coming out of the corners. Brakes as well. They've got to be super strong. Very strong on the braking. As soon as we come down into turn eight, a Goldwagen corner. It's uh, really an awesome bit of braking that happens on these cars. You actually got to hit the brake as hard as you can because you use the downforce of the wing. You don't ease onto it like you would normally on a pedal. You've actually got to dab it as hard as you can. There you go, you see the hard braking and then turning into gold bargain. Well, what about fitting yourself in there? It looks like it was a bit of a tight squeeze. Dude, you have no idea. <laughs> but I managed to get a couple of laps in and a big thanks, as I said, to Volkswagen and to Swat Corps for giving us this opportunity. It was short and sweet, but the nice thing about it is I got an idea of what these cars can and can't do. I must say, really, really impressive. The handling is amazing. The braking is pretty spectacular too. Not as good as the V8, but uh, pretty much right up there. But I must say the acceleration and the grip around the corners in this thing. I mean, I only got to do three laps in this thing, but let me tell you something. Even on cold tires, now I know why these cars handle so well and why they go so fast around the tracks in South Africa. A very awesome experience. A big thanks to SWAT Corps, of course, to Formula Volkswagen and, of course, all the team here for helping me out and putting me in this car and making a plan to fit this fatty in. And I can tell you something, if you are looking to move forward in uh, the world of motorsport, this is one place you want to aim for. I'm definitely getting going that next year. Back into qualifying though, back to the track that is Kailami, and it's going to be super tight and a few new names heading in the front. Cad Van Bieden was outdone by Grant Orbel, Tasman Pfeffer in her customary front row, it was all about the 38 special. He's the pole man, he's the man they've got to catch, but he's already champion, so it's just a bit of playing for him here at the final round. Fast and loose at the front, but he heads up the front row for the final time in 2010, Moss versus Pepper. Grant Orbel alongside Chad Van Bieden, Van Bieden going for third in the championship. Third row headed up by a very consistent drive, Ernie van der Valt, next to Rebello. Then it was uh, Byron Ferguson and Simon Murray, two of the older states. Go a little bit further back. <laughs> An old dog in the pits, Baron Pappas versus Shelley. Simon, another pole. It's the final race of the weekend and of course of the series and uh, you must be looking forward to uh, getting out front and hopefully not tossing it like in East London. 
Yeah, well, in qualifying, my last lap, where I set my quickest time, I had a bit of a moment. I'm um, coming on to the second last corner. I went off, I still managed to get the, get the quickest lap on that lap. So, yeah, I'm going to push the whole race. I want to try to get as big as lead as I can. And, yeah, see what happens. I'll try and keep it on the black stuff. Tazzy, second place is still up for grabs, babe, and you got everything to do. Second place on the grid will help you out. I've wrapped up second now in the championship, so Shay can't beat me. But uh, I, I want to get first uh, in this race, but we're quite a, quite a way off, Simon. So we've got to find that second, and hopefully we can beat him in the race. Well, he won the penultimate race of the 2010 season for the Formula Volkswagen crew, but watch out for the new names in the mix. Orbel is definitely going to be a spoiler. A little good start there from Eric van der Velt, right on the tail of Orbel going into turn one. Tasman Pepper looks like she might, oh, nearly out does Simon. But the 38 Special comes flying into turn one. Cold tires on that car is going to be slipping and sliding. Look at Chad in the background, also starting to slip out a little bit. Orbel's up to fourth, and it's Ernie van der Velt in fifth. Orbel was actually trying to get a move up the inside of Chad, and Chad actually had to come over to the inside of the track, mid-corner, to cover that line. That's going to slow him down a little bit, and all of a sudden, one and two are starting to check out, and the third place battle is all Bell, and the, the, the Chad, and then Ernie just tagging onto the back of it. Oh, Simon lost with the problem down the straight into uh, Sunset Corner. It looks like he's uh, sorted that problem out. He's now tucked in behind Grant or Bell, comes up the inside of him. I think he might just be having a little bit of fun and games with these guys, though. You know, either he's mixing it up, or he's completely messed up his gearbox, because it looked like he was dragging down the straight there, trying to get the drive out of the corner in third, but he is messing around at the front now, just driving around the outside of people. But you don't want to go onto that cement, it's going to get real greasy. Ernie gets a move off the inside, great drive from Ernie. Ernie from the vault and right on their tail is Daniel Rowe. Different colours from Daniel Rowe this time. He's in the Terry Moss Racing Stable this weekend. Black and white with the 27 on the nose cone. Still running the LUK and uh, diesel colours, but still with Terry Moss backing this car as they come flying down. He's had no practice, Matt. He arrived here this morning, got into the car for qualifying, and basically put the car onto the grid, and then went and raced. We want to talk about Danger Man. Funnily enough, they're both in the black carts. The 27 car of Daniel Rowe and then Orbel. As we see a big lockup at the back, that was Murray getting all cars across up. You know, getting out of shape there. It looks as if there's uh, big problems there at the back. This uh, Daniel Rowe is now being outdone by Ernie van der Vault. And in the background, look at Craig Shelley all over the back of those guys. The yellow car flicking from left to right, trying to find a way past. Can he sneak through? Not this time. Line of stern into the final corner to complete lap number one. It's got busy out there. You can see these guys have put a lot of development, a lot of race practice, a lot of track time and seat time into their season in 2010. And every time they've gone out, they got faster and faster. Taz has got to end the season on a win. She'll be stoked with that. Veron Pappas making a welcome return to Formula Volkswagen, but a puncture is going to see him and the demise of that Formula Volkswagen is pocket in pit lane. So we're halfway through the second lap. Taz leads out ahead of the Chad, who's had a busy first half of the uh, race, first half of the lap, should I say, and then Orbel running in third place already in his first time out ahead of the reigning champion. Just showing the kind of uh, stable and heritage he comes out of Formula Ford champion a couple of years ago and uh, running in single seat to sports cars. He's got what it takes and he's ahead of the 38 special. Simon is not going to find it easy to get past Grant or Bell. Yeah, he's happy to have his head hanging out there. Doesn't worry about a tin top and not worried about the wheels hanging out of the side of the car with no protection. He's cool with that. Open wheels is where he's at. There's a big move from Simon though. Up into West Bank corner. Late braking and gets up the inside. Grant tries to come back at him but uh, unfortunately just lost out that ground earlier on in the corner and through the triple apex of West Bank corner down the West Bank mine shop. Moss moves to third. Good to see all Bell very spatially aware. What I mean by that is he knows exactly where his wheels are, how far he can lean into Simon Moss before there's carnage, and it was very close. There was probably about a centimeter between those tires before they hooked up. Uh, the Super Bowl now heading down towards 13. Tasman Pepper leads out. Chad Van Buren is in second. That's basically how the championship is going to end up. Simon Moss has wrapped it up. Remember at the previous round, but it is second and third place that was going to be up for oh, grabs. Move. Sorry, oh, big, big move, move from Simon Moss. He was flicking all kinds of shapes coming into turn number 14. I don't know where he got the braking, all the hookup. There wasn't even a smoke of the tires. So he just found a hole, and he's definitely back up to race pace. Simon Moss, he's going to be going for the win now. Second place after getting bogged down to around about fifth place on lap two. It's just unbelievable how quickly Simon gets those Dunlop tires working. They normally come in at about lap two or three. We're into the third lap right now, and you can see Simon's got them absolutely dialed in for Kyle Army. Van Bearden now under pressure from Grant Orbel. And Orbel, I've got to say, well done. Gets into the seat for the first time and is already throwing the gloves down and punching it out at the front end. Blowing the track wide open, though. The one, two, three, and four are checking out Orbel. He actually wants to walk away with a podium in his first race, but a bit of a surprise to see Daniel Rowe as he was running high up fading backwards now. Him and Ernie are in the chase group. Then you go back and pick up on Simon Murray and Ferguson. Great to see Simon Murray running the same colours as his Porsche, spraying that car. Then it's Ferguson behind him. Oh, sorry, it's, it's Rebello. It's Rebello in Ferguson's car. It's Glenton Rebello. That is correct. Glenton Rebello in, in Ferguson's car. And there he goes through, trying to catch onto the back end. And see Simon Murray's got a little bit more seat time than Rebello. 
But Drabella loving life in this Formula Volkswagen series. Onto the braking marker. Simon's going to cut back here. He's going to try and get a late apex. He does. Gets the drive. They side by side. Onto the West Bank mine shaft. And he's got that move done under power. Not many times you'll see a car actually make that move and get into the front halfway down the mine shaft. Didn't have to do that and on the brakes. He was on the power and he got the drive all the way out through the corners. Tasman's going to have to work hard now. She had a good... Oh, what is Simon doing? I'm going to say Tom, Tasman had a good lead before that move came into play and Simon is just screwing things around out at the front. I can tell you, so Simon's playing here. He is definitely having a bit of a draw here. And I think Tasman's sitting there going, yeah, we might as well play because first, second, and third is basically wrapped up in this title. Chad would like to take uh, the victory away from Tasman as he tries to go up the inside. Looks like he might have missed a gear though. Comes out of the final corner in the wrong gear. And look at that. Orbel comes side by side with him and goes and takes third place away. That is a Chad move. He went diving in there. Definitely had it done. But I think he missed a gear. It looked like he came out of there in third gear. Got absolutely no drive. And all the work that he did trying to get a second place dropped him down to fourth. Up into the double left and uh, turn three. Now up onto the back straight that heads him towards sunset. You can see Chad has come straight back. Looks like Tazzy also missed something through there. As Orbel pulls up alongside. Might be able to outgun her around the outside. But going into sunset corner in these cars, you've got to have huge cojones. And he does it. And so does Chad. Something went wrong on Tasman's car. Well, I don't know what's been going on here. Because in the early lap, Simon Moss had a problem with his gearbox. Then it was the Chad. Now it's Tasman's uh, time to actually have some problems with the gearbox. So very rare for these things to have that kind of problems. But they're showing their face and uh, rearing their ugly head right in the final round. Well, speaking of the gearboxes, there are brand new gearboxes expected for these cars for 2011. So don't worry, guys. You're only going to play for these uh, two more times. This race and the next one coming up. Remember, the whole way through the season, it's been everyone chasing down on Simon Moss. So Chad has given the fight to Tasman. Now he's giving it to Orbal, but he's run himself loose again. He's run way wide. He will get the drive down the mine shaft, but the inside line is all about Orbel. If he can hold that outside line, he's got the inside for the ball. Let's see whether or not they go side by side. No, he tucks in behind him. Or does he? No, he doesn't. Van Buren runs onto the marbles. That's going to cost him. He's going to get really slippery through there. Tasman might be able to capitalize. Unfortunately, she can't. She was just on the wrong side as they went through the uh, sweep. Now they come out of the ball, down towards 13. This is a superb dice we got here for second, third, and fourth. I'm telling you right now, Tasman just stayed out of that because the line that Chad was on was a dangerous line and he could have easily lost it. Now he goes for the Chad line. Can he find the right gearbox? Yes, he can. Gets the drive. Yeah, much better this time from Chad, but Tasman got superb drive coming out of the final corner. Orbel loses out. He goes to third. He might go to fourth. No, well done as the flag comes out. He just hangs on. That is an awesome dice to the line. Second place goes to Chad and third place to Orbel. The win, though, goes to the champ, Simon Moss. He's the 38 special, just underlining what is number one driver. Awesome start there from Moss in the Dixon Batteries car. Ben Bearden, second Orbel. First time out on the podium. Tasman Pepper and Daniel Rowe, your top five. Sixth place going to Ernie van der Waals ahead of Rebello, Shelley, Murray and Ferguson rounding out the top ten. A bit of hard work in these cars, isn't it, Grant? Like you have no idea. And these youngsters are so fast. You know, I was driving at 20 tenths the whole time. Um, thought we might have a bit of a shot, but uh, I haven't really got my head around this thing yet. The oversteer is a bit much for my liking. Go and get the power down. And I think that's really what cost us. And then this last lap, last corner, do or die. And uh, he made a stick, and he's a little guy I can drive, you know. It's excellent.